Welcome back. We're off. We're racing. It's race day here. It rained all night long. Not too heavy though. The grass is thoroughly soaked. But otherwise, we're off to a good start. With this, it is an hour-long race plus the lap you finish, and each lap is about 30 minutes long. So we raced for a total of about one hour and 30. And this is just the first lap. I set it up so the GoPro ran at some higher settings and killed the battery about a lap and a half in. The start is always fun. You get off into a big group. We go off in sections, everybody in that different race category. This is Outlaw. So these are the guys in pretty much any bike, any age, any race, and we all just go off and kind of go crazy. Whoa. We have a bit of fun here. This is obviously a wet day, but overall the conditions were really, really good to ride and race. The beginning is always chaotic. I have not been on this track since last year, and they obviously make modifications to it. Didn't get out for practice yesterday. So you ride in blind, which always makes it more interesting, especially when you have a half memory of what it was. This is called a snakes and ladders race, which you'll see in a second is just up and down and up and down, left, right. You're kind of going all over the place as if you're going up snakes and down ladders, just like the game. And yes, I know that was backwards. We're on the KX250F, looking to upgrade as we've seen in previous videos. If you've not seen them, we're talking about getting the CRF250RX. The 450s are wonderful, they would be great, but they do get heavy after a while and they are like a full race death machine. Whereas this, you know, has a bit of pleasure to it where you're not ready to kill yourself. Not winning any races here, so why bother? These hills are always a little steeper, a little slicker than they look. This section here was like a little drop off, then over there's like a little log buried bridge there, which was slick to get traction on. All the bridges which are seen are just soaking wet, so they're just super slick. It's hard to keep going. These up and downs can get rough towards the end of a race. You get a lot of the braking bumps. And then on the up, you get the ruts from the roots and stuff being buried. It's good to get out again. Like I say, this was late October when this was filmed. And it's normally 50-50 whether we'll get snow. So the fact that we got some rain and had plus 10, it was honestly the perfect temperature. And still pretty humid out like it was not a cold day by any means. It felt warm, it felt good to ride. It's always nice to kind of follow someone. You get the, to see the next corner essentially before it actually comes up, so it gives you a little bit of a heads up. Those tree branches are all over the place. There's multiple different routes, but overall everyone's going the same direction as long as you don't cut too many corners. These trees can get narrow. These are pretty wide, but there is some very skinny options uh, where it's like a little close. The hard track was actually pretty easy today. Pretty steep. Normally this is like dry, dusty stand. As you see, I kind of overshot it a little bit. Normally you have zero traction going up. You're just spinning, going nowhere. With that wetness, it just shot you right up, no problem. You know, I like these races. They're fast, they're hard. It's a, you know, a mix of hair scramble, hard enduro, more hair scramble than hard enduro. Everyone wishes they did the hard enduro stuff, but the hair scrambles are definitely a lot more fun, a little more open, a little less two-strokey first gear, climbing over rock and rock. Some of these low branches are pretty harsh. Around a couple corners later, I did smack my head pretty good and it slowed me down. But I just skipped through that because uh, you don't need to see me crying on the floor. These sections here where it's fast but left, right, left, right is so hard when you're going blind. It's just tricky to keep the speed up but also know that in three seconds there's a left turn and in one second there's a right turn. And these sections here as well are very open. But again, it's hard to know. Do you go third, fourth, fifth and then all of a sudden you hit a left corner and never even use that. Pre-running would be nice, but normally my schedule just means I'm a little backed up and I don't have time to do everything. The track here down in Cypress River is fantastic. It was a new addition, I think, last year or the year before, and it's been great. It's fast, it's flowing, and it's dirt, which is a big, big improvement. Many of the tracks around here are getting very sandy, 
and you're just in this sand, sand, sand the entire race, spinning your back wheel, sounding like you're going 100 miles an hour, but you're going like five. Whereas this one, you can kind of coast along, you're not really trying too hard, and you get lots of traction throughout everything. These hills are super fun to go up. It's nice to do these races, whether or not you're winning, it's good to enter them to see how hard you can go, but it's also just another new place to ride. It's hard to ride motorcycles nowadays, lots of people don't like them, so you've got to find those select few places where people actually allow them, and organized races are definitely the best way to do it. When you start catching up with someone, I always find it, it's kind of like a two-fold thing. One, half inspiration for actually, you know, going and catching up with someone, you're like, okay, I've slowly caught them, now I'm right on them, now I've got to keep my pace, get a little faster, get around them, and not fall. The other is a good excuse to be like, okay, let's just pace this guy for a second, see how fast he's going, take a little bit of a break instead of push, 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 push. It's always a nice balance. It's always a, a tricky one to be like, do I take a break here or do I push forward? Because every time you slow down, you have to assume someone's catching up behind you. But with these head scrambles, obviously, there's not much passing places like it's hard to find a time to pass and to be able to do it with confidence and skill that you're not just going to instantly fall or hit a tree that's the next goal it would be nice if there was more races like this for mountain bikes around here i would do a few of them we have one starting to form up not too far from here which i should look into where you can do a 10 20 or 40 kilometer loop um, but right now these are the most organized events that are very well put together. This is always GoPro effect, steep and then a drop. So that actually goes undercut, so it's actually more than vertical. It's super fun to do, especially when you have no idea it's there. You kind of came over that wall and you're like, oh, okay then. Well, I guess someone else did it, so I guess I have to do it. This is where we're going. Okay, now we need to put some pressure on rev up the engine, make sure he knows I'm right behind you so he will be able to move out of the way. It's kind of the rules of the race if someone's right on your back for a long period of time, or even a short period, but they're coming right up on you, you know that they're faster than you, and you just have to get out of the way. There's no shame in it. As many times I let people pass, you just gotta do it. You also have no idea whether or not they are faster than you. They might be in a whole other class or category, so it's hard to tell. Or they could be like this guy who is actually the owner of the property, so can flow through this section super easily. This is a tricky-ish section where it's very flat, so you want to go as fast as possible. But we're weaving back and forth over these like three-foot gains and losses of property with a lot of sharpness to them. So a lot of them you can't go too fast without that back end getting kicked out. Even he, you can see, had a few ends where the back end was thrown out. And it's kind of fun, but it's a nice balancing act of how fast can you go without uh, throwing my back end too far out. It's super nice property. You run along the river edge here. You're going up and down the valley, getting very close to river on sections where you might actually fall in off a three-foot cliff, which isn't the worst thing, but definitely a beating. And then we come across where we actually enter the river, with the recent rains, it was just super muddy, like that black mud just was so slick, you kind of came down, those potholes there would get super deep towards the end of the race, but still fantastic weather for October, we were flying, this is dream weather for race day, you were never too hot, never too cold, the humidity was high, like I said, my goggles fogged up a decent amount, need to get some anti-fog on them, they're just getting older I guess. Yeah, this section here, really fun. Constantly check my back. Sometimes you kind of hear something. You can't tell if it's your bike, the guy ahead of you, or a guy right behind you. Especially on a four-stroke, it's probably the loudest thing out there. So you get a whisper of a two-stroke, and you're like, is that right behind me? Or is that across the river doing a different loop than me? There is multiple loops on this track, so it does get tricky. Like I said, there's an easy loop and a hard loop on the big stuff and then as well there's also a slower track which merges on and off so that's why you just have no idea if you're chasing someone even in your race or someone who's just fast in the smaller race 
Some of these kids are way faster than I am, it was. Yeah, it's just constant left, right, left, right. If there wasn't a guy ahead of me, I don't even know if I would have been able to figure that section out. As you can tell, there's lots of other things. There's one of the drop-offs into the river. Nobody went in it, but it's very close if you came in it too hot. If you didn't know it was there, like if I was alone, first time racing, there's a higher chance. Some off-camber stuff here I do like. It's a nice balance of balance the bike, go fast, get over the hump. Everything's tricky. Nothing's easy with that. good to do these races and it's good to make these videos. I've seen many before so hopefully we'll be able to make some similar to this. We've got BKXC on the mountain bike and stuff. There's a couple moto guys who do kind of videos like this so if you do enjoy them let me know. I also do have a second YouTube channel where I've been compiling all the GoPro footage completely unedited. I just put it together slapped up so you can hear me swear, get angry, kick my bike, on all the silly little falls which I never should have fell at instead of this nice relaxing kind of ride where I explain what's happening. You gotta do both though, it's part of racing. See here this guy probably was just in a lower class than us. There's no way someone would have pulled over that easy in the same class as me. Most of them fight. Checking signs around the corner, up and over. Come hot over that hump and then hard left super low branch set so you can't really cut it too too short or too tight lots of low branches on this one i remember hitting my head and it was a good one it'll be in the long one i think it's chris clark long plays as a youtube channel if you wanted to see it and this would be the cypress river race this field was fun too um second lap definitely went faster but it was tricky to go that much faster the corners being so slick, you have to slow down a decent amount to get any traction out of it. A couple of old bikes there, guys watching on them. And it's hard to know where the track goes, you can't see with all these hills and valleys. There's a lot of places where you're like, oh, we must dip into the trees here, but then all of a sudden, there's a left turn. So we gotta keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. I do wish. I had that CRF 250RX, I think it would be the optimal bike, I keep talking about it. The Kawasaki 250FX would also be a nice bike. I mean this thing rips, it goes really nice. It would be nice to have a little change in gearing, which I could attempt with just changing up sprockets. But I do like the idea of a bigger tank to do some different races, a bit longer. If anyone knows of any races near the central Canada region or America, I'm willing to go for a little drive. This was super fun. You come in out of the field, coming in hot, and then you dip down this kind of fast-paced trail. Left, right, left, right, open up into the field. You gotta keep a bit of power on, keep the speed going. Hard left, and then you think you're gonna shoot up and out, because that's where it went last year, but they actually added a new tight technical trail through the trees, which was much funner than just going around this tree, because that's all you really did. You went around this whole bush last year. And then popping out, and then you know that you can keep some speed here. So although you're not going that fast, I was in like fourth gear, pinned, back wheel was just spinning. Um, the bike doesn't have to work very hard to get that going, it's just that slickness to the ground. As you can see, it's not like soaking wet, it is like a perfect amount of traction. Um, as you come through these trees, I know there is a big hill which comes up. And last year, I thought it was much more technical than this. I think it was loose, dryish dirt again, and it was much harder to get up. This year, super easy. Super, super easy. These big open fields as well are where all of them merge, so you get a lot of variety of riders here. And it's always hard to tell if someone's just kind of taking it easy for a second and then you go for an overtake and all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, I'm going fast too. And you get this kind of chaotic moment of that guy still wants to be ahead even though he was going slow. There we go, let's go. So hard to gain some speed and then all of a sudden be like, okay, left turn. As you can see, there is some ruts forming where everyone's kind of hammering the brake into the corner and committing to it. 
took a little bit of effort though. This is super fun. You just like fourth, fifth gear, popping it in there, getting faster, faster, faster. Not exactly sure, but you know it's coming up soon. A turn into the trees, because this field can't last forever. Nice slide, power slide around there, back down to a dip. And this was fun too, you keep a lot of speed. It was rough though. We got a lot of downhill ruts here where a lot of people were breaking through these trees as roots. It's kind of like a zigzag. But you get through it and you start catching up to people again. And the part is now you're in that zone. I've completely gone. I'm like, okay, we're doing it. We're going for the win, even though I don't even know what position we're in at this point. It's so hard to keep track of positioning because of the track merging on and off with other racers. You have no idea where you are. And it's kind of fun that way. It takes a little bit of pressure off just being like, okay, I'm just riding, I'm just racing the next guy ahead of me. I'm gonna take him and that's it. And then you keep going, remembering he's behind you, so you gotta keep your pace up, prove that you were fast enough. That's always what's in my head. Was I actually fast enough? I can't slow down now and have him tailing me. So I gotta keep up that pace to clear him to make sure he knows, yeah, I'm faster than you. Which is again, always tricky when you don't even know where the lefts and rights are. We're coming up to a finish here, so it gets nice, fun, technical. Some hills. This section here was super fun. You kind of open it up, jump a road, back end kicks around. And then as you come into these trees, it gets a little bouncy. I don't know what to explain it. You want to go super fast, but every single like little bump, your back end is getting thrown around. There's either a log or a short rut there which just throws it. You just It's hard to feel. You wish you had a GoPro facing backwards too the entire time and you could bounce back and forth. You almost need a 360 camera. Not fully into the 360 game. Seems like a lot of effort. You know, shortening an hour and a half of riding GoPro footage down to 18 minutes is very tricky. To keep it interesting, and to show off the track, you know, I want to show you what this track's like. You know, it's free to come. Well, it's not free to come, you gotta pay to come, but it's very affordable to come out. Anyone's welcome, and you just come out and ride. Here we go, big hill again. And up we go. So that was one lap at the Cypress River MDR Manitoba Dirt Riders Hair Scramble. It's fun, it's not too difficult, and it's worthwhile coming out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully someone enjoyed it out there. Let me know if there's some more local races I could attend. Otherwise, have a good evening and good luck out there.